Hi, this is Francesco Fenu from Audio Production. Welcome to my industry study presentation. My learning path has been mostly related to music production. However, I have lately developed a great interest in audio post-production after being involved in a few projects such as the sound and music design for a short animation and the creation of a sound library. So today, I'm going to talk about sound design. Sound design is the art and practice of creating soundtracks for a variety of needs through the process of recording, manipulating or generating audio elements. It's employed in various disciplines including filmmaking, television and radio production, theater, live performance, sound art and video game software development. So, as we can guess, a sound designer is one who practices sound design. Since this term has been around for nearly four decades, it might sound quite common for the many, but when it comes to define what the role of a sound designer is and which specific tasks he has to do, it's easy to feel a little bit confused about it. So let's have a look back to the history to see if we can understand where this term comes from. The idea of using sound and noise produced with dedicated machines rather than music in order to enhance the emotional impact of visual content most probably was born at the start of the 20th century with Luigi Russolo. But the terms sound design and sound designer were used for the first time in film in 1979 by Francis Ford Coppola in the process of making Apocalypse Now. I love the smell of my pump in the morning. Coppola granted Walter March the title of sound designer for his work, marking the first use of the term as a credit in film. However, this was not the first time an inventive sound editor played a critical role in a film sound. As William Whittington wrote in his book Sound Design and Science Fiction, the early origins of sound design in Hollywood cinema can be traced to another sound construction, sound montage, where we see the same Walter Murch being responsible for the creation of special sound effects on George Lucas' first science fiction feature. THX 1138 in 1971. That we are all now programmed for perfect happiness. Perfect happiness. Perfect happiness. But similar perfect techniques happiness. and overall aesthetic approaches were used for other movies released before 1979, One, two, three, like American four, Graffiti five, in 1973. Or Star Wars, A New Hope. In 1977, where Ben Bird has been the mind behind the creation of unusual sounds of laser blasts, space battles, and a host of alien languages and android noises. So, why did Apocalypse Now in 1979 bring out for the first time the concept of designing the sound? Francis decided that the film was only going to be shown in one theater. And the exhibitors, the fuckers, are going to see it. And then they're going to play the picture on our terms with our sound the way we want them to show it. So what does this mean? Is a sound designer someone responsible for the final mix in 5.1? Not really, and we can clearly see as even in contemporary film soundtracks there is a group of people behind it rather than one figure, and each of them has a specific task. Well, this is how it goes for medium and high budget productions at least. Perhaps we can deduce that the role of a sound designer, other than fulfill one or more of these specific tasks, involves the process of understanding and conceptualizing which sounds are needed to deliver the message the director wants. My name is Mark Mangini and I'm a sound designer. My job is to be responsible for everything that you hear in a movie. Now we can understand that this role tends to concern the knowledge of multiple disciplines of the sound field and even more. The first goal of a sound designer is to tell the story with sound. And if we start to consider all the other disciplines in the entertainment industry where a sound application is required, the sound designer tasks can be significantly different for each one. At this point, we can conclude that a sound designer role can be properly defined only when referred to a specific context. If we step out from the entertainment industry environment now, and we just have a look at the world that surrounds us, we can easily notice how sound is everywhere, and most of the tools we use every day produce pre-recorded or manipulated sounds to deliver us a certain message. Like our laptop, smartphone, domestic appliances, cars, 
and public transports. And guess what? This means that somebody had to design those sounds. For sure, sound represents a big part of the human communication system, as for many other living beings. Nowadays, an increasing number of companies in any type of industry are taking these facts into account more than ever. One example could be the South Korean automotive manufacturer Hyundai and his team involved in the constant development of unique sounds for the passengers in the cabin and what they call the Active Sound Design, Personalized Engine Sound System, Virtual Engine Sound System. Other companies make this clear through their commercials. The Mocha Sound. Definitely, this can tell us something about how this field is evolving fast and new opportunities are coming out every day. A few months ago, I had to develop together with a fellow student a business and marketing plan for an hypothetical startup which was supposed to sell a digital post-production tool dedicated to sound editors. During our market research about the audio post-production field, we discovered insightful information released by the US Bureau of Labor Statistics which predicts 8% increase in employment for sound engineers through 2028 and the percentage would increase for those who have also been trained in visual equipment. On top of that, chances to work remote increased after the coronavirus outbreak and I keep seeing every day new job positions opening for sound designer via LinkedIn, Indeed and Soundlistar. Apparently, the game industry seems to be the biggest achievable market out there at the moment. The reason why I came so far is because it will make more sense now if I state that I'm seeking a career as a sound designer. While it's still early for me to determine in which context I'm going to do so, for sure I know besides all the technical aspects involved, what I love the most about this is the process of research and conceptualization needed to understand which type of sound works the best as a message carrier in each situation and the creativity development led by that. This is what especially gives me a strong motivation to push myself in this direction and to keep nurturing these capabilities. During the past years I've also been studying photography and I eventually had the opportunity to put my knowledge into practice by working as a freelancer photographer for a while. The affinity with pictures that I have grown through that experience turns out to be really helpful now when it comes to associate sound with any type of visual content. For example, when I made this electronic music song called Pigeon's Attack, I wanted to describe the first period I moved into the new apartment in Amsterdam and my balcony was populated by an entire community of pigeons who was making the balcony very filthy and totally unenjoyable for humans. I really struggled to make them leave and not come back, but I wanted to describe this situation from the pigeons' perspective. The dry drum sound combined with the wobble bass would emphasize their incredible audacity and their strategic skills when the attack starts from the roof and they come down together like an army. A few days ago I've been lucky enough to have a great conversation via Skype with Nicola Staub, the owner and supervising sound editor at Celeste Audio, settled in Los Angeles, California. He started his career about 12 years ago, when he was 21 years old. Following his studies in the audio field, he moved to Los Angeles to pursue a career in the music production. But due to a series of circumstances, he ended up working in the audio post-production, being mainly involved in the process of mixing for several movie and documentary productions. His own company now is mainly focused on sound for commercials and documentaries, offering all the services that audio production and post-production may involve. During our conversation I asked him what he thought might be a proper definition of the role of sound designer nowadays, and he agreed with the fact that this term means everything and nothing at the same time. But although the term stays vague by its nature, it makes it easier to consider it like an umbrella, metaphorically speaking, and to think that under this umbrella we'll find a huge diversification of tasks grouped together. Even being able to manage only some of those tasks is good enough to find a job related to it, while being confident with them all would become a valuable asset to sell in the market. His first suggestion to me was to gain some experience as soon as possible, through an internship or working for at least for a certain period of time with someone who has more experience than me. Nicholas represents a type of figure that I aim to become from a career perspective. He has his own company, works for himself, he has his own faithful clients network built during the years. 
He works in a really flexible environment and he most definitely loves what he does and the way he's doing it. He built up a working life which seems to be pretty well balanced and highly sustainable either in terms of financial and personal satisfaction. About what could be a crucial aspect to take care of to grow a sustainable career is said, besides all technical skills, the focus needs to be on relationships and about the people fostered in inclusive communities. Sustainability is in relationships, cooperation and community involvement. Give people a good reason to remember you. Besides the audio skills and awareness about new technologies development, a good understanding of how sounds behaves in a space through the study of acoustic and how humans perceive the sound in a given space with psychoacoustic could be quite relevant for any direction I am going to take for my own future development. To summarize, my strategy is choosing a subject related to the study of acoustics for my major project, which would introduce me to a more scientific approach as a student and eventually prepare me for a further academic experience. Keep practicing with anything related to the sound, being involved in different projects and collaborations, and collecting assets for my portfolio and eventually for my website. Looking for an internship or a part-time job in a post-production studio to gain as much experience as possible. Right now I'm constantly busy gathering sounds for the sound libraries I create, together with sound effects. I am working on my own on the production of a video course, and I'm also producing some music. I feel confident this is going to be useful in the near future, as it will give me a certain flexibility and so, more chances to fit well and be successful in different environments.